On February 9th, 2011, this is Polling You number 38, Environmental Factors in the Face of the Penalty Double. Greenbridge friends, it's Michael here at Bridge Hands, and today we're going to take a look at environmental factors. What is that? Well, in the bridge ecosystem, we have a partner across the table from us. We have two opponents lurking in the shadows, ready to do their thing. And so, in our environmental system, let's take a look at some various factors. Number one, well, that would be partnership fit. Partnership fit is a real biggie, isn't it? When we have a nice fit with our partner, that'll get us extra tricks. You know the drill. We can do roughing, cross roughing, and also we can get a chance to promote our long suit. Similarly, we might even get some extra chances for finesse. And we certainly, if we have working honors, we can deplete their trump rather quickly. So... What about the law? Do any of you know about the law? The law of total tricks. And the law of total tricks says, in summary, when we have a eight card fit, oh, that's good, that's fine. But if we can have a nine card fit, hey, that's even better. That's very good if we have a five four or a six three fit or even a seven two fit. Well, what could be better than that? Well, how about a double fit? An eight card fit in two different suits. Maybe a 5-3. Then on the other suit, we have a 4-4. Four, four. Or a 5-3 opposite of 5-3 in the other two suits. Very nice. Can anything be better than that? Oh, yes. That would be the 9-8 double fit. That's a 17-card fit. In the Law of Total Tricks, that's kind of considered golden. Okay. Well, how about environmental factor number two? Well, that would be double fits. Yes, yes, that was that 9-8 fit, or even an 8-8 fit. Kind of sounds familiar. Yet, beware of the dark side of the force. Well, how could anything be wrong with a double fit? Well, guess what? If you have a double fit, what does that mean? Yes, it means they will have a double fit also, right? So if you've got a 17-card fit, that means they're going to have at least a 16-card fit themselves. Maybe a 17 also. So... What could be bad about that? Question is, yes, who owns the master suit? Do you own the spade suit? Do they own the spade suit? When it gets into a bidding war and magical tricks can happen when you have a 16 or 17 card fit, these double fits, be a little bit careful thinking about who has that master suit. Also, another factor would be, what is the vulnerability? Mm -hmm. So if one side's going to be a little bit pushy, Who's prepared to go ahead and take the heat? We'll speak more about vulnerability in a little bit. Number three, the hand shape. This is just taking a look at our own hand right now. Obviously, a big distributional hand would be good. A six, four, two, one shape for our 13 cards is a wonderful, excellent shape. Obviously, a seven, three, three, one would be even better, wouldn't it? How about a five, four, three, one? Yes, anytime we have this singleton condition, especially if that's their suit, then this is going to be an extra benefit because we might have a 4-4 fit with our partner. Might help us get up to this 17 combined fit, right? Okay, what else? How about a 5-4-2-2? Two, two? That's still a very good shape, isn't it? Not quite as good as a 5-4-3-1, but still, when only a doubleton in one of their suits, and by the way, we're speaking about competitive auctions, right? Four, 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 one. Um, that can be a good fit also with our partner. But well, what's the but on this? Well, the problem is, is that there are these times when you have a four, 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 one shape, and sure enough, that's the way the trumps work around the table. You and your partner have a four-card fit, and one of the opponents has a one card in your suit and the other has four. So we should be a little bit careful when we have this four, 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 one shape. That might be the way the distribution is of the trump suit around the table also. Anything else? How about a five, three, three, two shape? Well, that's fine. There's nothing spectacular about it. It's one of the three common hand patterns. Some people call it the ugly duckling. It's not really that ugly. It's just a fairly common hand. So it's nothing great about a five, three, three, two shape per se. Okay, vulnerability. Yes, we said we'd come back to vulnerability. That has to be one of the big factors in the mix. In the mix? Well, right, because there's different combinations. Some players, although, don't seem to worry about vulnerability very much, do they? Well, they ought to be, because playing against good opponents, 
they take a look at the arbitrage factor in scoring. That's right, what is the bonus versus what is the penalty for under tricks? When it's vulnerable, it goes up mighty quick, doesn't it? 200, 500, 800, 1100, oh my goodness, kind of sounds like slam scoring, doesn't it? Especially when you're playing in part scores. You don't see people going down 800 or 1100 for a slam. Similarly for a game, when somebody bids a game, somebody doesn't go down these big numbers. Some people call them telephone numbers, these four-digit numbers. But in part scores, sometimes people get, well, a little exuberant, shall we say. So be sure to watch that vulnerability. Yes, you may have some of those other things going for you. Nice shape. But unless you have a double-double fit, be a little bit careful. Watch that vulnerability. Okay, let's take a look at vulnerability in action. First of all, we're non-vulnerable. And they're not vulnerable. Well, this would be an amber condition. Nothing great, nothing bad, just kind of neutral. Keep your eyes open, full steam ahead. How about when we're non-vulnerable and they are vulnerable? Well, this is a great thing. I'm not saying we have a license to steal, but certainly they're not going to be so quick to whack us when we are non-vulnerable. Why? If we're in, like, say, two spades, two hearts, something like that, they double us. If we happen to make it, we double our trick score. That is equivalent of four hearts, four spades. We get a game. We get a game bonus. Versus if they set us and we only go down one trick. Oh, that's not such a bad deal if we're not vulnerable. Down one, not vulnerable. They get 100. Not that big a deal versus a big game bonus. Okay, how about the next one? We are vulnerable and they are not vulnerable. Well, it's the opposite condition, right? Now we have to be a little bit careful. This is the condition red. Yes, we get our game bonus, but on the other hand... If it turns out we go down a trick or two and are vulnerable, not so good. And then, of course, the last condition is where both sides are vulnerable. This is another amber condition, like both sides non-vulnerable. Number five, onside and offside tennises. That's right. This is where we have honors behind the right-hand opponent. This would be a good thing, wouldn't it? We've got a ace-queen behind somebody that bid one heart, or maybe king-jack-third when they bit a heart. This would be good to have these honors behind them. Conversely, if the environmental factors are such that we have tennises in the left-hand opponent suit, or we've got the king-jack third, and the person to our right has bid one spade, and there sits our spades, hmm, we may not score any tricks with these tennises here. Okay, lastly, is what about when they both bid the suit? Now, it all depends. Do you feel lucky? You think that maybe righty has got the cards in the suit, the honors? Do you think that maybe lefty has got the cards in the suit? Or maybe some of both? Obviously, if you've got a king, queen, third, then one of them will probably take a trick if they've got a fit. But sometimes you have to take a look and consider, was it the right-hand opponent that bid strongly, and therefore that's the person who has the ace? Or maybe not. We're not sure when they have a fit. Okay, so in summary, the environmental factors, let's look at them. First of all, the law, the law of total tricks. Number two, the hand shape. Do we have a 6-4-2-1? Do we have a 5-4-2-2? 5-3-3-2. Now, what's the worst one? That would be a 4 triple three, right? No doubletons even with that one. Double fits. When we have double fits, good things can happen, as long as they don't have a double fit in the spade suit above us. And how about over and under? That's right, this is where your tennis is behind the player to your right, or worse, when you have tennis is in front of the player to your left. And of course, the biggie, the vulnerability. So let's go ahead and take a look at a hand for our advanced players. We'll take a look at a couple more for those with a premium and ultra membership. Here we go. Okay, on this hand, it's going to be West is the dealer. Everybody is vulnerable. And West, you've got... Ace, queen, ten, five times in spades. Very good. That's six points. Looks like one for distribution is seven. In diamonds. King, queen, fifth, another five points. Definitely opening hand. We really appreciate the fact that we have all of our honors in the two working suits. Very good. And for those of you who are uncomfortable opening these hands that are 11 point, um, perhaps you should think about the rule of 20. That is, we take the look at the number of high card points, and provided our honors are working in those suits, we take a look at the total number of cards in the suit. So, 6 and 5 makes 11. We have 10 cards in these suits. So, 11 and 10 makes 21. 
definitely has enough points. You could make this queen of diamonds, a jack of diamonds. You still would meet the rule of 20. So this is definitely an opener. We also like the fact we have the master suit. And these honors are working nicely. Thank you for that ten of spades. One spade is the opening bid. For north, in diamonds, ace, jack, ten, four times. Nice suit. Five points. In spades, king, jack, nine, four times. Another four points. It's nine. Ace of clubs, 13, worthless doubleton in hearts, nothing there. We would like to do a double, but if we do, we're promising three cards in the unbid suits. And our partner just always seems to bid our doubleton suits, don't they? So we better not do a double. Well, we've got nice spades behind the west bidder, but we want to have 15 to 17 points to do a balancing no trump bid. We're just going to have to bite our tongue, pass, and hopefully our partner will keep the auction alive. Maybe a reopening double, if nothing else. Okay, over to East. In clubs, ace, jack, ten, nine, five times, great suit. In hearts, hmm, ten, nine, eight, seven, six. So we have a five, five, two, one hand ourselves. Um, nothing in spades, a singleton or a partner suit, unfortunately, and a worthless diamond doubleton. So we have four high card points, um, some tens and nines. Do you want to call it two distribution points, one for each in the rounded suit? No, please, don't do that. We don't have a fit with part, and we shouldn't be counting our chickens before the eggs have hatched, or however that saying goes. So, no, our partner, yes, we would like to have some spades. We would like to even maybe bid no trump, but there's a lot of things we like and just shouldn't do. We'd hate to make a bid and have our partner launch into three no trump or launch into four spades when we've only got one primary honor, the king of clubs. So we pass. And around to south. South says, well, hmm, I have an opening hand. I'm very proud of my heart suit. Ace, king, queen, jack five times is 10 points and definitely at least one for distribution. I'd play this like a six-card suit, wouldn't you? Okay, and with our queen third of clubs, there's another couple points. Uh, nothing in spades, worthless tripleton, worthless doubleton of diamonds, so we go ahead and we will bid two hearts. Back to West. West, you'd really like to show your diamond suit, wouldn't you? So let's see, how do you want to count the hand? We've got one loser in spades, one loser in diamond, one loser in heart, two losers in club, five loser hand. She's a nice big hand, doesn't take much from our partner. No, don't think that way. You haven't got a fit with your partner. If your partner has supported your spades, you could start thinking that way, but your partner passed. And look at these spade tennises. They're kind of moth-eaten suit, isn't it? At any rate, this West forgets vulnerability. Remember we learned that from our environmental factors today. And they just get thinking about these shapely hands. You ought to think about that first rule, partnership fit. So this person goes three diamonds. Okay, North, this is what you've been waiting for. Your patience has paid off. Look at that. You've got not only tennises in spades, remember you're over the person to your right, but you've got tennises and diamonds also. This is your lucky day. You're going to double. Okay, over to East. East, you're kind of sorry about this. You would like to have another spade to recover and bid spades, but if your partner's only got five, um, at least you got a doubleton diamond, so maybe you can get in a rough or two using your hand as dummy. So you're just going to have to pass. And South... Well, you can kind of figure with your diamond doubleton that your partner's got some diamonds behind the west. It looks there must be some spades there also since east didn't support spades. So you like you've got some good working values and hearts, and if your partner can't support you there, maybe your partner will even get some roughs, so you'll pass. Okay, so it's three diamonds doubled, vulnerable in the west. And the lead will be, well, it would definitely be a top of the heart doubleton, a high-low sequence. So it goes a heart five to the six to the jack in south, bottom of touching sequence, to a three. And as soon as we look at the dummy, we can imagine this is a five, five, two, one suit. Five in the dummy, right? Five are promised by south. All right. Next comes the queen of hearts. And roughed with a five of diamonds, two of hearts by north, and a seven by east. Okay. You need to have a play strategy here, don't you, West? What are you going to do? Good for you. You're going to start getting a roughing strategy. You're going to make use of these two diamonds and the dummy. 
plays a ace of spades, and a second spade gets roughed with a two of diamonds. Um, now what are you going to do that you're in the dummy? Well, certainly can't do anything in clubs. Don't want to come back in a diamond. You could go ahead and pull some trump, but then you're going to have all those spades to deal with, aren't you? So you want to get back in and do another rough. So obviously you're going to want to play a heart from the dummy and rough high. So uh, ten of hearts to the king of hearts in south, king of diamonds going up in west hand. Um, unfortunately, the ace of diamonds was held by north. And definitely steps up to the plate, seeing that another rough will come if they don't take it. Okay, North, what's your play strategy? Hey, there you go. Play that jack of diamonds as much as you'd like to save that honor. You're going to get that last dummy off of the board. Here again, what we always like to do is try to use an opposite strategy from the declarer. And we could see the declarer was going to try to get a spade rough in. Not going to happen today. Okay, next comes a low club, and when you've got a split ace-queen, I don't know, do you find you have a hard time guessing when there's a split ace-queen? Those are tough ones. In this case, they decided they would go up with the king, and they were a good guess. They guessed it right. The ace of clubs was to the north hand. So that helped. Coming back in a club, jack of clubs to the four, to the eight, to the ace in north. And north, what do you want to play? A third club two partners, queen. And what happens? Well, in west, they've went ahead and pitched off. They're getting kind of short in diamonds, aren't they? So that's probably a pretty good strategy. Unfortunately, south plays those pesky hearts. The ace of hearts, which was roughed then with the six by west, and partner north over roughed with the ten. How about that? So north, you know that you've got two spades and that there would be two spades by west because they promised a five card spade suit when they started with a spade. So you're in a little bit of a tennis position here, aren't you? Looks like you'd be better off to just go ahead and play the diamond and then they would have the spades behind you. This would be an end play scenario. So you play a four diamonds. Oh, what's this? Oh, oh, that's right. The partner could still have another diamond. In fact, it was a boss diamond. So very good. That worked out beautifully for you. Who comes back with a spade, not the heart, of course, and it goes to the ten, and what do you know about this? Poor West has been finessed. North takes the jack, plays the king of spades, trapping the queen, and how did you do? East-West, you got five tricks. Hmm. So eight tricks by East-West. Oh, and by the way, West, you were vulnerable. Remember the count? 200 for the first trick, then 300 for everything thereafter, 500 for the second trick, 800 for the third under trick, 800, that's a big score. Wouldn't you rather have just let the opponents play in a part score and maybe get 110 points? So that didn't turn out so well, did it? So what did we learn from this? North, you did fine to open. It was a very bad maneuver to come back at the three level. Yes, you had a two-suited hand, but you didn't have a partnership fit, did you? And North, I congratulate you for passing the first time. It wasn't easy to do. Had you doubled, your partner would have been in a heart suit, and then it would have been a heck of a mess trying to recover from that situation. Good pass by East. Compliment you for not bidding no trump with this kind of ragged values here. In South, that was a very nice two heart bids. Very well done. Uh, and that's where it got dicey after that. And as you recall, once it was double of three diamonds, the spell was cast. At that point in time, the play was to the hearts. It wasn't that long before poor West lost control. They did a good job by playing the ace of spades, getting one diamond rough. But North, you did a great job by overtaking it with the ace and then coming back with another diamond so that there wasn't a second rough. So great play by the defenders. Very poor bid of three diamonds by West. And hopefully, when West went away licking their wounds, with a little bit of encouragement from partner, they didn't do that anymore. Okay, so that's it for our environmental factors today. We're going to have a three-session, two more, on environmental factors coming up. So stay tuned for more. And for those of you with the premium and ultra members, we got some interesting hands talking about the law of total tricks and what happens with a 17-card fit. Okay, all, thanks for coming by today. Happy trails to you. Bye now.